Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the weekly update from the Ashland Hawkwatch in Hokesson, Delaware. Today is November 15th, 2024. This week there was one day with somewhat poor weather and not much of a flight, but otherwise it was a lot of beautiful days with decent winds on most days, so a lot of steady flights, and we're right in that period where we're in the peak of the red-shouldered hawk migration, we're getting a lot of red-tailed hawks, and we can also get golden eagles this time of year. So let's jump in and take a look at some of the photos from the past week. Let's start off with an eagle, since we can get both bald eagles and golden eagles this time of year. On this bird, we see that it has a lot of white to the underside of the body, which tells us that this is an immature bald eagle. We also see a lot of white in the wing pit area, which is a spot you wouldn't really see white on a golden eagle. And looking at the overall silhouette, we see that this bird has a large head, another good field mark for bald eagle. Now, if you look at the trailing edge to the wings, you'll actually see two different ages of feathers. You see that there's some feathers that stick out more and are a bit more pointed, and those are retained juvenile feathers. So those are feathers that the bird would have grown while it was in the nest as it grew its first real or juvenile plumage. The feathers that are in between that are shorter and more rounded and make up most of the wing, those are feathers that have already been replaced one time. So this is a bird that's a little over one year old. It would have been born not this past summer, but the summer before. Here we have a hawk, and looking at the overall shape, we should be thinking Budio. We see this bird has a really distinct belly band and dark patagial bars, making it a red-tailed hawk. And we see a dark trailing edge to the wings and a red tail, making this an adult red-tailed hawk. Here we have another Budio, but if we notice, this one doesn't really have a distinct belly band to it. It's got some light streaking to the underside. And we see that it does not have dark patagial bars in the shoulder here. And another thing that really stands out is it has translucent crescents near the wingtips, and the wingtips are more squared off. This is a juvenile red-shouldered hawk. Here we have another Budio gliding high overhead. So is this a red-tailed hawk or a red-shouldered hawk? Well, if we look at it, it does have a distinctive belly band to it, and it has the dark patagial bars, making this a red-tailed hawk. And we can see that dark trailing edge to the wings and red tail, making this an adult. And this bird is quite heavily marked. We can see that's a really thick, blobby, dark belly band, and it also looks like the throat is dark. So this is likely the northern subspecies of red-tailed hawk, Abieticola. Here we have a large dark bird, so we should be thinking either vulture or eagle. And in this case, looking at the head, it looks like it has a head that is feathered, so we can roll out the vultures, making this an eagle. Now, looking at the plumage of the bird, we see three distinctive points of white, one in the center of each wing and the base of the tail. Overall, very clean looking, not a lot of splotchy white underneath. So when you see three points of clean white in these spots, that means it is an immature golden eagle. And we can also confirm that by seeing the gold color to the back of the neck here or the nape. And if you look at the overall shape of the bird, we can see that golden eagles have a somewhat small head compared to the head of bald eagles. It looks like the head sticks out less than the tail does. And also, I, I always think of golden eagles as looking a little bit more curved, especially the wings. See how the wings pinch in here towards the body? And I think they just look less rectangular and blocky than bald eagles do. They just have a certain elegance to the shape of the wing. And this was a bird actually that came in being chased by a bald eagle and they uh, were fighting each other for a little bit. I think the bald eagle was just trying to chase it out of the territory, but it's always fun to see those two species interacting. And then the golden eagle gave us a pretty good look as it came overhead, as you see in this photo. Here's a photo from the day that was slow. It was just overcast with not much wind and rain moving in, so not too much migrating, but we had this bird drop in and land in a nearby tree and give us a really nice look. This is an immature red-shouldered hawk. And then actually an adult red-shouldered flew in and perched in the same tree with it. So uh, this bird stayed put for a few minutes. We got to put our binoculars and scope on it. So really nice look at a young red-shouldered hawk. Here we have another eagle, and on this bird, if we look at where the white is, there's a lot of white in the wing pit areas, making this an immature bald eagle. In fact, this is a juvenile, so one that was born this year. And we can also see it has a very large head, which also supports the identification of bald eagle. 
Here we have another eagle, and on this bird we see those three points of white, one in the center of each wing and the white base of the tail. And we can also see the gold color to the back of the head and neck. This is another immature golden eagle, and this one is really, really beautiful. It soared around fairly close in good morning light for us, and the white patches in this bird are on the larger end of what we would see. There's just individual variations. Some of them have small white patches. Some of them have much larger white patches, so really stunning bird. And here's a topside view of the same golden eagle, and again, you can see that really white base to the tail, and you can even see the white patches in the wings here on the top side. Usually when they have small white patches, you don't see it on the top side, but the ones that are have the larger white patches sometimes do show it through to the upper side. And again, you can see that golden color to the neck. Here we have a raptor that's somewhat lanky. You can see it's holding its wings up into a shallow V, somewhat long tail, kind of thin, somewhat pointed wings and an owl-like facial disc. This is a Northern Harrier and looking underneath, it's very lightly marked, pretty much no markings at all to the underside of the body or here in the patagio area, making this a juvenile Northern Harrier. Here we have a small raptor. And if we look at the wingtips, they're more rounded rather than pointed. So we should be thinking hawk rather than falcon. We see a long tail, so we should be thinking the Accipiter genus. Now looking at the overall shape of this bird, it just doesn't seem big and lanky. It seems a little bit more rounded and compact. So that starts me thinking sharp-shinned hawk. Looking at the size of the head, looks like a really small head. Looks like a big eyeball on a small head, kind of has a bug-eyed look to it. Another good field mark for sharp shinned. And it has a really thick, messy streaking to the underside, which is also a typical feature of juvenile sharp shinned hawks. Looking at the tail, it looks like the outer tail feathers might be a little bit shorter than the central ones, uh, which is possible with some sharp shins, especially the larger females. So um, not much we can read into it from that, but not a huge difference in the length of the tail feathers. But all of those features together make this a juvenile sharp shinned hawk. Here we have two adult bald eagles that were chasing each other around for a while, probably about 10 minutes. We spotted them way out in front chasing each other around over the donut, and then they ended up coming pretty close overhead. And a red-tailed hawk even joined in. This bird was yesterday's highlight. We have a really small bird, and looking at the overall color, it's maybe got some gray to the head and a lot of greenish tones here to the back, and especially the tail here. We can see it has not really a, a full complete eye ring, but at least white eye arcs to it and kind of a thin pointed bill. This is an orange crowned warbler, which is a fairly uncommon species to see here at Ashland and up at the Hawk Watch. I've had a few over the years, and this is a species that winters in small numbers in Delaware. You can find them around, but something that's always neat to see. Here we have a small raptor with very pointed wings. We should be thinking falcon, and we see a lot of dark streaking to the underside and a dark tail with some white bands, which are good field marks for a merlin. Here's another exhibitor. Looking at the shape of this bird overall, it seems kind of small and compact, somewhat rounded wings. We see a very squared off tip to the tail because all of the tail feathers are the same length and a small head. This is an adult sharp-shinned hawk, and we know it's an adult because of the orange barring here to the underside of the body. Here we have another exhibitor. This bird is larger and lankier. We see wings held out very straight. We see a tail that's a bit longer and quite rounded because the outer tail feathers are shorter than the central ones, giving it a nice rounded tip. We see a large head to this bird, and we see teardrop streaking to the underside of the body, indicating that this is a juvenile Cooper's hawk. And let me just flip back and forth a few times so we can see the difference in shape and other features between Cooper's hawks and sharp shinned hawks. So first, why don't we look at the size of the head? Cooper's hawk has a large head, and on the sharp shinned hawk, the head looks smaller, especially with the wings thrust forward a little bit. It's like the Sharpie's head barely sticks out past the wings, whereas on the Cooper's hawk, it sticks out quite a bit. Now let's take a look at the tail. Note the rounded tip to the tail on the Cooper's hawk. And going back to the sharp shinned, very squared off tip to the tail. And just looking at the overall shape of the bird, look how lanky and more stretched out the Cooper's hawk looks. The tail's a little longer, the head's a little bigger, and the wings are a little longer and held out straight. And compare that to the sharp shinned hawk, just a little bit more compact overall in shape. 
And let me just flip back and forth a few times. Cooper's Hawk and back to the sharp shinned Hawk. Cooper's Hawk and one more look at the sharp shinned Hawk. And keep in mind that these are different ages. So if the Cooper's Hawk was an adult, we would also see the orange barring like we here on, have here on the Sharpie. And likewise, if it was a young sharp shinned Hawk, we would see more of the brown streaking like the Cooper's Hawk shows. But this is a nice comparison between two, two birds we saw within a few minutes of each other, and it was quite obvious just the difference in the overall shape. Here we have a hawk that should be easy to identify simply based on the plumage. We see a lot of orange to the underside and then a lot of black and white banding to the wings and also the tail. It looks like a dark black board with thin white chalk lines, making this an adult red-shouldered hawk. And we'll end with one more beautio since this is one of the most difficult identification challenges we're dealing with this time of year as we're getting a lot of red-shouldered hawks and red-tailed hawks. Taking a look at this bird, we see a clean upper breast and a distinctive belly band, and we see dark patagial bars, making this a red-tailed hawk. Also, red tails are a little bit more bulky looking. The body's more bulky. The wings look a little bit more broad. And we can see the light shining through. Um, we talked earlier about the red-shouldered hawks having kind of a pale crescent near the wingtips, whereas the juvenile red-tailed hawks like this one show more of a translucent square in the inner primary. So you can see that a little bit here in its left wing as the light is shining through. So juvenile red-tailed hawk. If we take a look at hawk count for the totals from the past week, this week started on the 9th. You can see that most days we had between 100 and 200 birds. The only exception was on the 10th when we only had 31 birds, but uh, you can see yesterday 188, today 106, a lot of days around 100. So it's been a lot of very steady flights. And really that's been a theme of the whole season. We haven't had a lot of huge days and a lot of really small totals. We've just had a lot of steady days and pleasant weather. And if you take a look at the numbers. We're getting some days where we're counting some black vultures migrating, but most days we aren't counting any. Turkey vultures have been pretty steady, anywhere between 25 to 100. And we're getting some bald eagles. We're getting some harriers. We're still getting some excipiters, although they're starting to really wind down. The, probably the most notable thing we're getting is red-shouldered hawks. You can see we had 84 yesterday and 54 today. So those numbers are really adding up. Some of the highest days of the season, um, with the exception being the 96 that we had on the 3rd. That'll probably end up being the peak day for red-shoulders this season. But um, we're really still in the window where we, we can get big red-shouldered hawk flights when the conditions are good. And Yesterday, we had cloudy skies and light northeast winds, which are what they really like, and it makes it easy for us to spot them. Uh, if we get a day like tomorrow where it's going to be sunny with strong winds, um, even if the red shoulders are flying, it can be very difficult to spot them when they're up high. So sometimes we get the biggest flights on the cloudy days because red shoulders seem to be able to find thermals a little bit easier. You go out and it's a day you're not expecting to see anything, but there's just enough thermals for the red shoulders to get up and migrate. Taking a look at red tails, we're getting some, nowhere near the numbers of red shoulders we're getting. Um, you know, when we think of red tails, we think of getting some days with over 100, but this season it just hasn't really happened. Um, it's steady flights, but like you can see, the highest we had in this period was 28, and most days it's like 15 or 20. So um, not a huge number of red tails moving. And for golden eagles, we've had three so far in November, and we had the one in October. So only a total of four golden eagles so far this season. Um, last year was a really high year for them. And this year seems to be a really low year for them. And now that we're at mid-November, we sometimes don't really get many more golden eagles after this. Maybe one or two if we're lucky. So we'll have to see. Hopefully we get a few more golden eagles. We had some really warm weather at the start of the month. So we kept saying, well, maybe they're just staying up north waiting for the colder winds. So we'll see if it picks up here towards the end of the month. But in most years, we don't really get many golden eagles in the second half of November. And you can see that the numbers of falcons have really dropped off, um, occasionally seeing something like a merlin. But as we get later in November, the, we don't really expect to be seeing falcons at this point in the season. Overall, for November, you can see we've had a little over 2,000 birds, and for the season as a whole, we're at exactly 7,500 migrants. So 
not a super high year. Remember, we pretty much missed all the broad wings, but not a terrible number either. Um, so uh, a lot of decent weather coming up the next few days, it looks like, um, at least the next three days. Tomorrow, it's supposed to be northwest winds, I think at about 10 to 20 miles an hour. So it might be a little bit blustery. And if you're going to come out and visit us, be sure you dress warm on those windy days. It's always colder than you expect it to be, especially once you're sitting still and that cold wind is hitting you. But we still have two weeks left in the season. We wrap up on November 30th. So we hope to finish things out strong. And we hope you can come visit us out at the Ashland Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.